The 2005 Disney film Ice Princess introduces us to Casey Carlisle, a Harvard scholarship hopeful who at first thinks that her passions for physics and figure skating couldn't have less in common. Even though that sort of makes me question her understanding of either topic, you really never made the connection between sliding around on ice and momentum before this? Pretty sure your intro to science textbook had a picture of Tara Lipinski on the cover, but whatever. Here's your Nobel Peace Prize, I guess. For those of us watching at home, get ready for a storyline that felt too obvious even 17 years ago, an ugly duckling makeover that really doesn't work, and a revolving cast of hot and cold antagonists who all seem to hunt and kill little girl dreams purely for sport. But don't worry, because along the way we also learn important life lessons, like do the right thing, don't give up, and the rich blonde lady buying you gifts might still secretly be a monster. It's time to explore that odd moment when Disney decided to weigh in on the Tanya Harding scandal with a feature-length kids movie that makes all women look like Cruella de Vil. So sharpen those blades for an ice, ice installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break them down into little tiny clips like the segments of an ice skating competition. So we can decide if they were worthy of a bronze, silver, or gold medal. Or if they didn't place in the top three and therefore are disappointing children who we will mock. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more 2005 era Disney movies like this, but most importantly, click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss new videos from me. Merch, Patreon, let's do it. Obviously, I was excited to watch this movie because it stars Michelle Trachtenberg, who, I mean, honestly, is really most well known for Harriet the Spy, although I think other people know her for her role as Dawn in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Slayer, what's a slayer? Slayer. This was one of the few movies that she starred in outside of those kind of vehicles but you get a feel for this character right off the bat. Joan Cusack is in that window like, damn, maybe I should try Playtex sport with wings because she looks like she just got out of prison. This girl is clearly unstoppable, especially when it comes to layering sweatshirts. But how is she rocking aisle six of Burlington Coat Factory, yet her lower belly is still exposed to the freezing temperatures of Swan Lake over here? This is the most fake looking pond I've ever seen. The IMDB page was like, that was actually a custom ice rink. Yeah, I can see the lines where they play hockey in it. I will say this beginning did not feel like a good start to me. Like, why did we start with her looking like a pretty decent ice skater, as far as I can tell, only for us to then find out that she's a novice and not good at skating? I don't know. I guess she is naturally good at skating, but her mom doesn't seem to know that. I, this is confusing. Her mom is like, do your homework. And that's when we get the feeling that really what Casey loves to do is study physics. And her teacher is like, we've got you on the list of people who should do this summer project to get a scholarship. You'll need a letter from me for the scholarship and you should think about a special physics project over the summer. Something unusual but personal. Let them know you a little. Unusual but personal, you say? Like determining the velocity of my Farts? This guy is like, Harvard wants to know how physics has played an important role in your daily life. Well, I love how it keeps me from floating off into the atmosphere and pumps all of the blood to my organs. If Casey actually has this advanced understanding of physics, does Harvard really give a f how the law of inertia helped her pass her driver's test. There's so much of this movie that feels utterly cliche. For example, Casey and her best friend are rather invisible, being ignored by the cool ice princesses of the school, such as Hayden Penetier, who snubs her for an invite to the party. We also get a feel that Joan, who is played by Joan Cusack, that's Casey's mother, she's like really pushes her academically and is very collegiate. She also has a lot of like feminist quotes that she pulls out, so we are supposed to know that she's like a feminist teacher. I mean, what is a personal science project? Isn't the nature of science supposed to be completely unbiased and factual? I don't know, honey. I'm still trying to figure out why your father ran out on us. Casey just watched her science teacher use a Bunsen burner to make a piece of toast, but apparently no one uses science in real life. The script has fun little details like that, which give it a professional edge. And yet somehow the actual main characters all seem to be like against Casey. 
So it gets very confusing who her actual allies are. That's why she loves physics so much. The laws of gravity are the only ones that haven't turned against her. By the way, if you don't have Disney Plus and you wanna find this movie on Netflix, you'll have to use a VPN, which is why I am so grateful for the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. As someone who needs to watch a lot of movies from a lot of different places, I use Surfshark every single week. Surfshark is a virtual private network that helps mask your information when you use the internet. Anyone who's trying to look at your internet activity won't know the location that you're doing it from. With a single tap, Surfshark lets you virtually travel the world by changing your IP address to another country. When I wanted to watch Ice Princess on Netflix, I just switched over to a UK IP address and voila, I get to see all of their content without paying extra. I also use Surfshark to protect my location and information when I live stream or join video calls. Get Surfshark VPN at Surfshark.com deal slash Duramio. Enter promo code Duramio to get 83% off and three extra months free. Casey and her friend are watching figure skating that night, which aside from her ice skating on the pond earlier is the only other indication we have that she's interested in the sport. I wish that rather than seeing her ice skate and then watching her watch ice skating, there was some way to illustrate that she had a passion for watching the sport, but didn't think of herself as athletic enough to try. I had read there was a deleted scene showing her as a little girl, maybe that one something they went into. Like if she had to put away the skates in favor of academics for some reason. But the fact that she's watching this and already ice skates makes it seem weird that it's a total surprise to her mother when she picks up ice skating as a hobby. Oh, she's so precise, you know? I bet there's an exact aerodynamic formula. You bet or you know with 100% certainty because ice skating was used as an example on your recent physics midterm. I like how this movie tries to make it seem like Casey is the very first person to discover that it's science making her ice skate slide. Harvard is gonna be like, please stop presenting this like it's brand new information when, you know, Nike uses it to design their rollerblades. Just show us how you can figure out the surface area of an ice rink or something. And if your loan gets approved, welcome. She decided is going to be like the perfect personal topic for her project. So she enters the hallowed halls of Hardwood Sports Skate Center. She's gonna to start to videotape these girls in action. It cracks me up watching these professional ice skaters twirl and twirl. And then Hayden Penetier scoots through the frame like she can barely balance. Like, woo, look, I can go backwards. Great job, sweetie. Let's bring in the obvious stunt person now. Thank you for learning that little trick for the movie. These girls are training for the regional championships, which I think you perfectly well know. I just want to digitize some images into my computer to see if any kind of unified theory emerges. Come on, Kim Cattrall typecasting. You've got to let her. Casey has terminal movement movie nerd mouth. Symptoms include using too many scientific synonyms and saying the word download to describe things that are even being uploaded or just regularly loaded on a website. So Tina Hardwood here, they really went out of their way to disguise that this character is based off of Tanya Harding. They said, Tanya Harding who? This is Tina Hardwood. After Hayden Penetier is like, oh, she's not here to steal our secrets. She's just some computer nerd mom. Tina is like, fine, you can shoot our practices with your camera, but you have to convince the parents. It shows like all of the ice skating parents are clearly like real stage bombs about this. They take it very seriously. And they all yell at Casey being like, don't interrupt her. But I don't know why they're even introduced and then made to seem like such a non-issue. Wouldn't these parents be like really competitive and desperate to get their kids ahead? So they'd be like, you can watch our practices if you make sure that my daughter gets an A in math because she's been failing. And the skaters have to have passing grades in order to enter the regionals or whatever, you know? like building a conflict there, some stakes, an obstacle to Casey's goal. You know, stuff that makes movies work. Things like that, it just feels like the movie's going through the motions to try to like satisfy a checklist of sort of cliche feelings in a movie. But Casey has the permission now to tape the rehearsals. And we further learn what kind of hard ass Tina Hardwood is. Brian, she's training. You know the rules. I just brought her burger, Mrs. H. Jen can't eat that stuff. She's like, I will allow you to eat the burger and then I'll watch while my daughter licks the smell of it out of your mouth. It's healthier that way. Listen up parents who push their kids too hard in sports. If they are truly that naturally gifted, then you shouldn't need them to train until their bodies skip puberty to get to the Olympics. You really want a vitamin water sponsorship that bad? Tacky. Tina is yell, yell, yelling. Winners make sacrifices. 
Maybe they just cheat. Turn that off! Casey was like, oh, sorry, I was just trying to theorize on the thermodynamics of shitty parenting. I mean, triple axles, uh, nude bodysuits, Winter Olympics on NBC. Why are you going in for a close-up on their personal family fight? <laughs> that, <laughs> she's too much. Jen, the popular girl, gives this hint that, what, Tina's a cheater? I wanna know more. Casey's friend admits that the first round of studies on these ice skaters feels a little dry. So she asks Tina if she can join one of Tina's classes. Tina's like, you can join our novice class for $600. So, so that means that Casey has to get a job working at the rink. It seems through this sequence of events, like uh, she had no interest in ice skating until she liked watching figure skating on TV and realized she could study the physics of it. And now she wants to take the class so that she can make her physics project even more personal. Why couldn't it be something like she figure skated a lot as a child, but she could never get this one trick done. And mean girls at the time or her abusive dad was like, you'll never do it because your body's shaped weird. But now she's finally getting back into it and learning that she can do it. She has to master it using physics. I don't know, something like that, right? It makes it more important. Cause right now I'm like, why does she love ice skating so much? I'm just curious. It seems like she's just naturally discovering it, which is not that cinematic. Anyway, here are the three mean ice skating girls who I kind of like. 165, um, 235 and 335. That's 730 total. Or if you want to split it the other way, it's 175 and, and 555. Ew, stop doing nerdy science stuff, such as telling us the prices of things. I guess Casey used physics to find some random new way of unequally dividing a check, but I'm actually embarrassed for Jen, who seems far too snobby to be eating such a school lunch looking salad. If this is how they make food at the ice rink, I'm not surprised that most of the skaters stop at Subway on the drive over here. There's like a whole middle part here where Casey joins the novice skating group and has to wear like the hip pads and it shows her falling down a lot while she's learning these basic figure skating tricks. Once again, further cementing that she's starting from zero skill level, which would be a lot different than what we just saw at the beginning where she like was gliding around like a Trident White commercial, you know? She said, this is how it feels to chew five gum and flew like an eagle across across that ice rink. So it doesn't really pan now that I'm watching her like fall, fall, fall. And again, it would be a lot more clear to me if ice skating was something she always watched on TV but never had the courage to try. And so now she's like really showing us that she's determined to learn. Oh, the Zamboni driver, his name is Dan Boney, I wanna say. Dan Boney, the Zamboni driver. No, his name is Teddy. He shows Casey that he doesn't know nothing about what she's talking about. For a physics scholarship. What, like, uh... Inertia and drag and velocity and all that? How do you know about that? That spot of the ice rink she's sitting on just thawed out straight to the floor. She said, hold on, are you a member of the secret society of people who've taken a high school science class? Literally knew the words and she was like, how do you know about that? You're not the only one who's in that class. Like he's older than you. Physics itself is not a secret that only you know. Does that make sense, Casey? Dar dar, Casey bar face. While Casey is working on her science project, uh, we get some more uneven character development from the mom who comes up behind her and is like, oh, if you ever wore something like that, I would throw up talking about these like figure skaters uniforms. And I'm just like, wait, I thought I thought this mom was like a feminist. She's always talking about feminist scholars and stuff. Why would you say that your daughter could wear something that would make you throw up? Wouldn't you say she's allowed to wear whatever she wants? The mom doesn't approve of figure skating. We don't need to believe or understand why. Cause I don't think the movie really knows either. Again, give the mom a better reason. I think later they try to tease out that the mom is jealous of people like Tina Hardwood. Why though? Did someone like Tina steal her man? Is that why Casey has no dad? I'm obsessed with Casey's mysteriously missing dad. I'm not saying kids movies need to explain explain why a character would have single parents. But since every movie typically with a single parent has to be like, and then we have a, a real emotional underbelly because the kid's dad is dead. Like they almost always make it a dead parent cliche. So the missing parent feels conspicuously absent sometimes if it's not mentioned once. Now I am going to increase the centripetal force by tucking in my arms. 
This will increase my moment of inertia. Oh yeah, you made this really fun and fresh, Casey. This feels like insurance documentation for someone about to administer lethal injection. First, I will inject the phenobarbital, which will stop the heartbeat. Girl, just do the spinny spin and tell me how the ducks go quack. That's what science is. While she's shooting this video, Casey lands her first triple and you get the feeling that she's like, that felt amazing. So she runs and tells Tina she wants to do the dance recital for her novice class, which is something she has to do if she wants to go on and compete. So you realize, oh, she actually wants to take this a little bit further. And so she borrows a unitard, leotard from Tina. All these random things like Casey has to go to a luncheon at Harvard and it almost makes her late for the recital, but then doesn't. We're just going through the motion. However, all of the youngins as well as Casey do their dance and they all get graded by the judges. And Casey did so well that she actually gets to skip two levels and can go right ahead to competing with her regular aged classmates like Hayden Penetier and whatever. All of a sudden though, Tina, who was super supportive and gave her the outfit she wore and was like being really mature internal up until now, that flips on a dime, which is just the first instance of me being like, I get if they don't want me to fully trust Tina as a character, but every scene, I don't know what I'm supposed to think of her. If I wanted to compete. You can't, you got some raw talent, but that's not enough. You need a coach, ballet, choreographer, private ice time. Chemical peels, bikini waxes, scalding hot coffee enemas. My first two daughters died in pursuit of this after school activity. So don't disrespect their memory by treating this as though it's some sort of during school activity. Tina Hardwood is so hot and cold with Casey that it's giving me attachment issues. And I'm not just talking about that part of my butt that keeps falling out. You need custom boots, $600 minimum, and the blades need to be sharpened every six weeks. It is what it is. You have to want it more than anything else. It's not something you do on a whim. It's something you do when your parents have disposable income and don't want you to try drugs too early in life. I think we're supposed to feel like, oh, now Tina is acting all gatekeepy because Casey's getting close closer to the level that her daughter's at, which I already have a hard time believing because I feel like Casey's been skating for a few weeks and Jen would have been practicing for years. Like what if Tina was like, fine, I'll coach you in my off time, but you have to assist me during all of my other clients. So then she's like bossing and demeaning Casey the whole time. And Casey's like, this is just me paying my dues. But really it can start to give us a feeling that Tina is not the nice mom she originally looked like. Something like that. Like I need a slower change. I don't know how to feel about Tina from the beginning. Like, I don't like her from the beginning. She comes off rude and hostile from the get-go. Then she softens, then she hardens, then she softens. You need to keep that Kim Cattrall d hard the whole movie. If you want me to get that Kim Cattrall d and again, I'm wondering why I don't care about this movie at all. And I'm like, oh, cause there's no stakes. Like, why is it that Casey has to get into Harvard? They haven't said why it has to be Harvard. Does she need to go to Harvard? Cause that's the only school that she can do the X, Y, and Z. It'll put her, bring her closer to her dad who lives in Boston. Did she already get accepted to Harvard, but she won't be able to go unless they get the scholarship money? Like none of that is clear. Cause they don't even bother to tell us. At school, Casey kind of lets the other skaters know, oh yeah, I won't be competing cause I can't really afford it. And they try to make her feel better by being like, listen, we don't have any social life. You can eat whatever you want. You can go to parties on the weekend. She's like, yeah, if anyone fucking liked me. So that's where that is. But then she gets this feedback from her teacher. Also, I'm like, wait, did summer end? Is summer over? What month is it? I don't have no sense of time in this movie. I thought it was winter this whole time because of the hats. Your enthusiasm for the project just leaps off the page. In fact, it's so good you could probably sell it. Hey, that's the same exact thing my high school teacher said to me. Except I think he was talking more about my boy p and less about the homework I passed in. I can't really remember. It was like 15 years ago. Also, I think we can commemorate this as the first video on my channel where I say the phrase boy p <laughs> Round of applause, everyone, for my high school boy p Boy p boy p that was the worst dialogue I've ever heard anyone say. He's like, this physics homework is so good, you could probably sell it. Like, what? Who would even say that? What are you talking about? Maybe if he had said like, I bet you there are professional athletes who don't get this type of feedback on how to improve. Wouldn't that be more clear? Because him being like, you could probably sell it. She's like, I can sell my boy homework. <laughs> my boy work is valuable on the open market. She goes up to all the girls and offers her scientific input and help, even though they all have coaches who should presumably be better at that. What if I told you I could fix your spread eagle? How would you like to learn to stop traveling on your sit spin? You can land your double axle. Clean. 
just fill this empty cup with your piss because I need a clean urine sample for my parole officer. Do this for me and I'll computerize your kickflip or whatever the hell we were talking about. It's all made up anyway. I love how at the beginning of the movie, Casey was supposed to seem like the shyest, most uncool girl we've ever seen, but suddenly she has the full on confidence to walk up to the cool girls and be like, I can help you, Jimmy, your nog jump. Like, what? What? what, what? All together, Casey's character development leaves a lot to be desired. Like, she's supposed to be getting better and better at figure skating, but from the first scene, we see that she wasn't bad at that ever. She's also supposed to be learning self-confidence, but she kind of sticks up for herself within the first act to Tina. They're not really illustrating these challenges. Like, I wish we had a little bit more of a marathon where we saw her get walked all over by her mom, friend, and coach in the first First act like there's no challenge she's overcoming she's just like making the decision to keep ice skating worlds start to collide a little bit when tina meets katie's mom for the first time at the rink tina harwood yes with all the trophies and the little outfits well don't let me interrupt carry on with all your fun here wait does this college professor really not know what the winter olympics are or is she just really good at being condescending Joan mentioned several times that the skimpy outfits are her biggest hang up with figure skating. Although I don't know why she has such a huge moral dilemma when it comes to frosted opaque leggings. Your daughter's arms and legs are gonna be out there looking like sausage made out of mermaid, not super sexualized. It's also like, you know, Casey's mom was watching her ice skate happily in the first scene. So I don't know why she has no idea that this is something her daughter liked. I guess it's just supposed to show that she really is not sensitive to the fact that Casey Casey wants to do something she doesn't care about. Bye. Kim Cattrall just telepathically asserted herself as the top in that forbidden romance. Joan Cusack is like, I haven't experienced a sexually charged glance in a freezing cold room since the last time I visited your father in prison. I know we literally just did this, but how about another ice skating training montage? This time featuring the music of, you guessed it, Super Chick, featured for the one millionth time in an early thousands movie on this channel. I'm not afraid to fall, it means I climbed up to fail is not to fall. You fail when you don't try. I hate that fucking song. I'm not sure what some of these computer programs are. Like, did Casey take a break from her physics project to quickly design the cover art for an Animorphs book? This montage is showing us that Casey's feedback is actually helping these skaters accomplish new tricks. And that endears Jen to Casey, who invites her to a party. Although it's a real fish out of water story. Obviously, Casey does not feel comfortable there. She even has a hard time flirting with boys. Uh -oh. At that rate of descent, his estimated trajectory would bring him directly through the window. Physics. Yeah, later. God, Casey, don't you know that guys can't stand it when you use gigantic, confusing words such as estimate or window? And she must just have like some kind of radar gun installed in her brain if she's like estimating trajectories everywhere she looks. Just enjoy the party. Don't look at people's trajectory. I don't think it would have taken a physics genius to understand that that kid was gonna fly right out the window, but Casey just decided to use a bunch of polysyllabic words rather than prevent him from falling to his death. We need you to call 911 right now. Stop explaining E equals MC squared to us. That was Kyle Dayton. Casey's like, actually, that's the Kyle I won't be Dayton since I scared him off with my big brain. Obviously, Casey's intelligence helps her give her teammates an edge when it comes to ice skating, but the script never does anything that challenge the stereotype that men are unattracted to intelligent women. Unless you're this guy, the love interest for Casey, in which case smart girls are adorable goofballs who you don't have to take too seriously. She could have warned me we were going to a party. You know, my sister has her own problems. Your sister? Not the driest, least committed spit take ever committed to film. She said, that's your sister? Oh, oh my God, oh, I'm just dribbling everywhere. Someone get a sham wow. I feel like the screenwriters were really struggling to put Casey in situations that naturally helped her demonstrate her science brain. Cause what is this? An object is only as strong as its weakest point. 
physics. Babe, we get it. Anytime something pushes on something else, it's probably physics. But right now you're pushing me to my weakest point by explaining every goddamn thing that happens at this party like you're Mr. Wizard. Doesn't matter if it's physics, you did not invent opening a soda can that way. But of course, Teddy is super into this life hack. He said, wow, she even knows how to open her own food and drink? I could sure use me a dame like that. Get you a girl with basic skills and reasoning. Does it actually work? Doesn't work in real life, Casey, what the f <laughs> Where's the weakest point? Oh well, to fall is not to fail. You fail when you don't try. You fail when you don't try. We're making apple pie. I also don't know how Casey goes to school with these people and did not know that Jen and Teddy were sister and brother and both the son and daughter of Tina Hardwood. Whatever, this movie kind of sucks. Teddy and Casey are definitely getting closer. Casey is working hard, her early mornings, her cross training, her working at the place. After like a week of really working hard, I guess, on ice skating, Casey's mom confronts her. She's like, what's up with this secret tutoring job? What are you doing all the time? Can you just give it a rest, sweetie? <laughs> They play this scene so dramatically, you would think those ice skates are the unregistered gun that connects Casey to the unsolved murder of her father. Look at Joan's face. She's like, Casey, so help me God, tell me you didn't bring any pre-sequined four-way stretch fabric into this house because I would rather get a late night phone call that you've been in a car accident than put up with this bullshit. The mom is furious that she would want to compete in ice skating. She's like, I just want to compete in regionals. And the mom's like, what do you have to gain from this? I don't know, a sense of accomplishment? God, it's just a sport. Like, can you chill? You would think Joan Cusack's parents were chopped into pieces by some rusty ice skates, the way she acts. But I guess it all comes down to Joan wanting her daughter to pursue more secure, like, job prospects, I guess. I have not been able to give you a quarter of the things that I wanted to. You've given me everything. Then you need to give me something now. Okay, mom, I'm going to give you a less John Stamos haircut. The mom from Get Out used a teacup to hypnotize victims into submission, but Casey's mom will just shake her sensible single mom hairstyle at you to the rhythm of her words. I have not been able to give you a quarter of the things that I wanted to. Uh, excuse me, ma'am, but if that frizzy, disheveled dog on your head keeps lunging at me like that, you're going to need to put it on a leash or perhaps give it to a no-kill shelter because no, kill. I guess this is the biggest fight Casey is ever gonna have with her mom because she has to drive to regionals with Hayden Penetier and Tina Hardwood. So Tina's really seeming like the good guy in all of this, for sure. She's not a regular mom who abuses and deprives her children of food. She's a cool mom. We will be playing classical music the entire ride. Oh. Unless, of course, someone wins a trophy. And then it's outcast for you. Yeah! Oh, all right, 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 all right. Now, ladies. Yeah! I said, what's cooler than being cool? Ice princess! That's a fun little call and response thing we can do at my birthday party this year. The script also tries to show us how sh all of the parents are. Like that other girl's dad is like, I work two jobs to pay for this and you'll be even more worth it when you win. It's like, okay. It's just bizarre because the movie takes a lot of time to point out the flawed dynamic between parents forcing their kids to do things they don't want or pushing them too hard into the things that they once wanted to do. But then it like never addresses that problem. The kids are always forced to work professionally from a young age. At the competition, there's this kind of a cool girl playing mind games with Kate her name is Zoe. No way, are you gonna place this year? Yeah, right the judges have already ranked this thing in their minds. Okay. Nice skates. Does anyone mind if we just abandon whatever storyline we've been watching for the last half hour or so? I wanna make the movie all about Zoe here. Please, Casey's always dragging me down with the word physics. I wanna see Lydia from Beetlejuice here win some ice skating trophies. Jen is like, don't worry, she's just trying to psych you out, but also. Haven't you ever heard of eyeliner? Stop, not yet. I'm... You're hot. The transformation is stunning, Jen, truly. She was about to scurry around that rink looking like Eileen Warnos after a heavy drug binge until you added slightly more brown pencil to her bottom lash line. And now, voila, she just might pass for a human woman. Jen was like, haven't you heard of eyeliner? Haven't you heard of anything besides eyeliner? Cause you got Jen tearing up like you just fixed her cleft palate when she looks more or less exactly the same. This whole makeover moment falls so flat 
that. The fact that the synopsis for this movie refers to Casey as an ugly duckling when she always looks exactly the same except for literally slightly more eyeshadow. I think a better way to handle this would be like if one of the other ice rink moms did Casey's makeup and it did almost look clownish in a way, making fun of how on TV, a lot of the figure skaters have very theatrical makeup. That way Jen can be like, here, let me fix it a little bit. And then she turns around and we're like, oh, now that's a more traditional glam that looks, you know, naturally pretty. That way we still get the journey of a makeover without it being like, what did they do to her? You know, a little texture for the children, a couple honey oat clusters of good writing so their brains don't atrophy. Now that Casey's finally got the appropriate amount of cosmetics on so she looks not ugly and not slutty, we can start skating. Clearly, Zoe is the coolest part of this whole movie. It takes a lot of natural confidence to pull off every choreographer's favorite dance move to illustrate authentic rock and roll attitude. Invisible drum set! You'll also see a variation of that for songs where you need to illustrate going out of control. Bees in the hair! Just watch your next local theater production. You'll see this. I'm losing control! I'm going insane! Also, it was around this point that I realized every single woman that that Casey interacts with in this movie, starts out acting like her friend, then turns into her enemy, then goes back to being her friend again. How does this poor teenager have more complicated political relations than in North Korea? I counted at least seven different primary antagonists in this movie. Three of them are girls on her team, one of them is literally her own mother, and all of them seem to have a really hard time believing that physics is important to the world of ice skating. They'll be like, ugh, that little girl thinks she can help you ice skate better with her computer and then she'll do something really good and they'll be like, well, she just learned to do that using her little computer. It's like, shut the f up. I just feel like there are too many conflicts starting and ending all over the place. The girls were bullying her at the lunch counter. She never, uh, how come now we have two little girls who are angry and want Casey to fail? How come the actor of Asian descent never gets equal screen time? Why do they absolutely coat Hayden Panettiere in bronzer for this? Like she's a cheese flavored potato chip. These are just some of the open-ended questions that have included in a series of very threatening letters to Walt Disney Corporation. What are they gonna do? Cancel the Disney Plus account that I never use? You could curb stomp baby Yoda to death right in front of me and I wouldn't feel a thing because it's a puppet just for those super sensitive viewers out there ice skating there's more fucking ice skating I don't know what to tell you Casey totally surprises even her coach Tina by pulling out a triple axle and so she places in the fifth spot which is you know not technically placing at all but Hayden Penetiere is right ahead of her and is like well if you skate well in this last program you'll knock me out of the fourth spot and you can tell that makes Tina very nervous because all of a sudden she's like Casey let's go get you some new skates which i'm like already you know not to trust that how do they feel i really can't accept these just show me you deserve them thank you Aw, you're welcome, Harriet the Poor. These hardwood ladies are turning you out at the ice rink, aren't they, mama? They walked up in here and said, excuse me, can we get a makeover and some new shoes for Oliver Twist over here? As you can see, we're trying to prevent her from scooting around on that ice looking barefoot and crazy like Donnie from the Wild Thornberries. I know, it's so sad, she's so pathetic. I don't even ice skate, but I was like, you don't want to use brand new shoes on the day of the competition. Like, I wouldn't even want to go to a theme park in a new pair of Converse also. Stars. And she's like, okay, some rigid hard leather boots that are brand new, let's get them. She's like falling on the ice quite a bit because her shoes are not broken in. And that prevents her from placing. And this is where we get the confirmation. Are those new? Are you crazy? They take like a minimum of 10 days to break in. But Tina didn't tell me. Typical Tina Harwood. They kicked her out. That's funny, because it seems like she's still very much here and finding insidious ways to hobble the teenage friends of her daughter. Diabolical. Casey obviously realizes she's been taken advantage of by Tina and uh, kind of assumes that that whole family uh, was setting her up to fail, which I guess I could see why she would think, it's not really that clear to me either. Like you weren't part of it. How could you think that? She set me up. All of you, what kind of people are you? Wow, Casey, I'm surprised you can even jump to all of these conclusions on those up feet. I think this Freddy Krueger foot of Casey's is my 
favorite instance of body horror in a Disney movie. The makeup department was like, all right, everybody, we're about to break out the blood and gore special effect. And then they took the cap off of a red Sharpie. Casey's out there yelling, not just at Jen for being a part of this, but also her crush. She's like, and you were also part of it by being so handsome. So Casey has to call her mom in tears to get picked up. And obviously there's a confrontation about the mistreatment of Casey's feet. That's the example you set for your daughter to lie and to sneak around and to cheat. I can't take it. These Cloverfield camera shakes and sudden snap zooms are making this argument feel way too realistic and intense. It's like we're watching a documentary about two Karens having to fight each other in Mortal Kombat. This is supposed to be at least the moment where we see Joan stick up for her daughter. She is like, my daughter would be good at anything she tries to do because she's brilliant. And I taught her to do it the right way without stepping over others to get there. So you definitely feel like Casey's mom is proud of who she is regardless of what she decides to do. Meanwhile, Casey doesn't want to talk to Jen because she still believes that she's just part of this toxic family. And then for, I don't know why Tina shows up at this high school. Like you go to work. No, you don't know what I want. If you have any sense of self-preservation, you'll scatter. I've never seen a group of people look more like Britney Spears' backup dancers from 1999. They all have faces and hairs that belong in white linen on a Santa Monica pier. Sometimes I'm scared of you. That last part about being scared of your partner, by the way, doesn't seem super healthy, but at least it's only sometimes. So basically Jen tells off her mom and she's like, I can't believe you did that to Casey's feet. You can tell Tina's like, oh, you got me gal. <laughs> Wow, we get it. Bootcut jeans were very on trend this year. The pants featured in the background of this defeated wall slide were generously provided by Old Navy and the primeval sh smeared labor conditions that they force their overseas workers into. God, I cannot get through one sentence without saying something about someone, huh? So Casey goes up to Jen and is like, I heard everything. I trust you now. Your mom is a bitch. <laughs> I love these movies where the friends are like, sorry, my mom ruined your life. Like, hopefully we can be friends forever. It's like, how am I ever gonna be friends with you? I hate your mom. It's gonna be hard. Casey is going through the motions at her Harvard scholarship meeting and she realizes, oh my God, the thing she loves to do with physics has been right under her ice skates the whole time. What I need to be doing, I can't do here. I'm sorry I've wasted your time. I mean, he just met you. We're the ones who had to watch for the last 87 minutes while you tried to calculate the terminal velocity of every thing you get your hands on. And all for a scholarship that you don't even want anymore? Oh, I get it. The Harvard scholarship was a MacGuffin. Oh, sorry. I guess I'll explain for those of you who aren't as smart as me. You see, a MacGuffin is what McDonald's calls their egg and cheese breakfast sandwich. How did you not know that? The Harvard guy's like, are you sure you don't want to reschedule in case he turns around and is like, F you college. <laughs> She's like, no, I get it, but I'm gonna do this thing that maybe will give me five more years of having a career rather than something long. I'm just kidding. Everyone should pursue their own careers. And if you choose a career that will destroy your body before you turn 30, good for you. You can teach ballet after. Obviously, Joan Cusack, who I keep wanting to call Joan Crawford in this, but Joan Cusack is having a very hard moment. You're giving up your dream. No, mom, I'm giving up your dream. Oh, they actually did it. They used the most cliche parent-child exchange ever used in movies. How dare they Friday night lights me in the middle of a movie about figure skating. Your gay audience has trusted you, Disney. And you reminded me about football? Why don't you just push me to the ground in gym class and then ask me why my arms are so girly like Mrs. L in ninth grade. Not me getting so triggered by my own memory that I just dox my ninth grade phys ed teacher and all of her adult children. This conversation between Casey and her mother feels like an acting class recreation of that scene from The Sixth Sense. I was half expecting that bloody bike accident lady to show up in the window like she's working the drive-through. I 
love her. So now it's up to Casey to train for her regional competition without the help of Tina as her coach or even the use of that rink anymore. So she's trying to ice skate on this bumpy outdoor ice rink. And just as she's about to give up, she gets a little help from someone else on the Hardwood family. Teddy shows up with a Zamboni. In what world could you put like a two ton Zamboni onto a tiny little ice pond like that. I think they kiss too, if that's important to you. So in the next scene, Casey shows up to Tina Hardwood's house and is like, I just need to know what happened in the past. And I'm like, what? You should be able to look that up online if it was really that big of a deal. But here's the story. I had an unfortunate warm up before my short program. I collided with another skater and she got hurt. I was suspended. By the time they considered reinstating me, I was 26 and it was too late. Because as we all know, 26 is far too old for an athlete to be any good at sliding around on ice anymore. Especially if they spent the entirety of their childhoods being over-exercised to the point where their bodies stopped menstruating. All of this so that we can go to the Olympics and show the world that we're still the cool, powerful, strong America that they remember from the 80s. Rock music, record players, letting gay people die of AIDS. Tina can't even fully own up to what she did. She's like, I had an unfortunate warm-up where a collision took place between a a fellow competitor and a hammer I was holding. You don't sound like you know what you did. I don't even think this is so much <laughs> Tina not owning up to what she did as much as Disney is trying to keep it ambiguous <laughs> how much she attacked some person. And what kind of collision must this have been? Of course, this is not anything like what happened with Tanya Harding, who actually had people who she wasn't really aware of go and attack Nancy Kerrigan without her really knowing in order to help her succeed. It was done. At least that's the story that Tanya Harding tells now. But there isn't a day that goes by that I don't wish that I could relive that moment and do it differently. Right, and that's why you did pretty much the same thing by swiftly mangling Casey's feet the other day, first chance you had. You're right, you did things much differently because you're 40 now and you intentionally hurt a child. So in Hollywood's eyes, you're basically La Llorona now. Casey is like, well, here's your chance to make it right. You can coach me for the regional and then you're absolved, which I guess works. But of course, Joan is not having it. She still hates her daughter. <laughs> um, That has nothing to do I with it. I think you want to be exactly like her. And if you happen to tell a lie now and again, well, hey, at least she'll be glamorous. Casey's like, so I get judged by my classmates for liking science. Then I get judged by my mom for liking ice skating. So I guess I'll just go follow my dreams straight to f***ing hell. I was also planning on wearing a wedding dress one day, but I guess not if my haggard, squawking mother is in the front row complaining about how it's too glamorous. These characters are just irredeemably awful right up until the very second the screenplay needs them to change. Boom. Ooh, I want a slow build. Show me some build it in. Microaggressions at the beginning. Show me an interaction at the beginning that feels much different at the end. This could be the first moment where it feels like Casey finally has a team of support rallying around her. Like, oh, her mom is driving her to the things. Tina's made her t-shirts for Team Casey. The other girls are cheering her on when she's getting things. Well, you know, like, are we rallying behind the main character? No, it's just like people angrily agreeing to do things in sweaters. It's the day of the regionals and things are finally being happy. Like Hayden Penetier makes friends with Casey's nerdy friends. So it's like, okay, everyone is capable of being nice, I guess. Because this little dynamo has been landing massive jumps lately. Uh, that was f***ing cool. No matter what, I always love watching professional figure skaters be humanely euthanized on their 26th birthdays, like the Lord intended. It's the Olympics, mama. We can't have their old, saggy skin and rickety rackety joints dragging on the ground and getting caught under the Zamboni. 26 year olds, pfft. I'm fully 30, by the way, so if I joined that novice ice skating class, the kids would be dragging me around in a coffin. I would be playing Father Dust. So Casey's about to go on. We learn that her mother does love her because she leaves class in time to get to her recital. I'm like, that doesn't seem like it took that much effort, but okay. Could have showed some emotional support before the big day. 
Uh, excuse me, judges. She's not allowed to bring physical props onto the ice. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was just an air guitar, but I, I guess I just fully believed her performance. If anyone in this movie is going to break the fourth wall by suddenly looking directly at the camera, you know it's gonna be rock and roll Zoe. Sorry, I meant rock and roll Zoe. As you can see from that make-believe ukulele, Zoe doesn't study the laws of physics. She breaks them on the ice rink. We see the other girl, the little girl do her thing. So many extra characters, so many extras. And now it's time for Casey to skate her heart song. And here's her opening jump, a triple sow cow. It's a good idea, Casey, but that doesn't seem like the most efficient way to start selling snow cones at the concession stand. Maybe try a quadruple sow cow, and I don't know, smash your face onto the ice a little harder. I'm not saying this to sound cruel, although I kind of like that it does anyway. One of these figure skaters has taken an embarrassing tumble at every single ice skating competition scene that this movie has had. So I'm a little desensitized to like these mistakes. It seems like it doesn't really matter. However, assuming the next ice skater is able to to get through their whole routine without snapping their neck on a basic move, I feel like as an audience, we pretty much know that Casey isn't gonna get the gold here. However, at least we get to hear it in a nice gentle way from Michelle Kwan. No, it's not enough. She'll have to settle for the silver. This does take her to nationals, and who knows, maybe the 2006 Olympics? With this skater, anything is possible. You're right, so many different directions she can go from here, such as completing a program without falling down, or telling us what happened to her dad real quick. Those reporters are like, Casey, Casey, can we have a moan of your time? We have some fan submitted questions from ESPN.com. Although looking at them, it seems like most of them are actually stern demands for you to show more boob. Fresh out of high school, fellas. Were you really proud of that one? Great. So as we see here, it's not the end of the world that Casey didn't place, because as Michelle Kwan just said, she's still on the track to the Olympics as a promise 18 year old skater. Even the other really skilled girls on the team are like, she's gonna be beating me in six months of training with Tina. She didn't win, but she did win. Another MacGuffin. We love a movie that has two sausage MacGuffins, two sausage egg and cheese MacGuffins. And don't forget about Teddy, who I forgot about. She kisses him. You just see a slow trickle of blood come down from her hairline and they're like, okay, she did hit her head pretty hard. We should get her to the hospital. Can someone get that Zamboni driver to stop kissing the head injury girl? Thank you. It seems like Casey finally has everything. A boyfriend, a new pair of ice skates, the girls aren't mean to her, and now, finally, a support system at home. You are going to be busy training. And four college courses. Four courses? Are you out of your mind? Two. But then four in the fall. Only if she wins sectional. Oh, happy ending. Now Casey has two abusive moms controlling her every move. They're like, I want her to die of physical overexertion by next year. Well, I want her to die of mental burnout by next semester. And Casey's in the middle like, <laughs> feel the rain on your skin. Honestly, it's a good idea. Probably best to mentally check out from this situation for a little bit. Ice Princess felt like one of the most superficial, boring and generic movies I've ever seen. This feels like a real dark era for Walt Disney Pictures when I feel like they were making live action theatrical movies, but they weren't necessarily a big part of their business when you compared them to like direct to video sequels or animated movies. And maybe that's why this one was struggling a little bit. This story might've been written by literally no one. What did you think of this movie? Did you like it growing up as a perennial Disney classic? Do let me know in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more movies from this period of time. And most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I'm breaking in a pair of hard, painful footwear. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for landing that triple axle clean with me today. I will see you next time.